So here I have the timing in line pretty much uh, to the marks. This one is maybe not quite a half a notch off. This one is right on the timing mark. Now when they, when they put the motor together, they set the timing on the back of the motor. They install the sprockets. They install the belt, I believe. Then they groove these notches in here to match up with the timing cover. A lot of people uh, think the uh, timing marks are set to have the block on tap dead center with the number one piston all the way up. That is not the case. The timing is set so that the uh, car runs in time when it started. Number one is not tap dead center, but they put these marks on there to help people when they need to check their timing or to, you know, replace the timing belt. They don't have to remove the hardware from the back of the cams. Now here's the back of the head and uh, this of course where your distributor sits and this is where your cam sensor sits and as you can see the intake cam here the part number is on the bottom and the exhaust cam the part number is on the top. So if you ever get off on these uh, on your timing and you get your sprockets off you can come to the back of this motor and align these the way they are here. Now this groove is cut in the back of the cam off center. More of the groove is away from the part number and on the intake cam this bottom line here this bottom of the groove cut should be aligned with the seam of the head which this is pretty much it may be off a degree or two and on the exhaust cam the the uh, groove is cut away from the part number and the line at the top side where the part number is should be aligned with the seam of where the uh, cam cover meets the head and it is so that's how you come to the back of the motor and align your cams on these 850s and 960s they're both pretty much the same now one thing I did notice when I put this cam cover back on is uh, you put it on in a pattern and when I did so the screws are you know long enough so that I set the cover on there I set the cams in place and in what I thought was in close to time and I went across and I just snugged all of the screws down then I went in the pattern of snugging the screw down and doing a half a turn on them this cover actually pulled itself down nice and easy I didn't have any clamps on it I didn't have any other tools on it that held the cams in place it pulled the cam cover down and once it was down the cam sprockets were pretty much still intact but you do need to understand that if your block is uh, in time on the mark on the crank you could turn these cams around 360 degrees so if the cams move a little bit and they're off just turn them back so that they're on their marks but I didn't use any special pull down tool or anything and this uh, these uh, this cover went right down and pulled down nice and snug I didn't seal it because I I wasn't doing an install but I did want to put it on for this demonstration if you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.